Hey Vikes, today we have an interview with Laura Kelly. I'm Sophie and this is your Monday Report. Whatever happened to predictability? The milkman, the paper boy, the evening TV. You miss your old familiar friends but waiting just around the bed. Hey Vikes, I'm Sophie and this is your Monday Report. Mr. Tinsley is in need of a few students to help out in the school store on November 16th because it will be open for business that day. Stop by room E19 or contact him through Schoology. Make sure you head out to the Seaman Middle School Activity Night on Wednesday, November 7th from 6.30 to 8.00. Trials for winter sports start next Monday. If you're going to take part in one, you need to have your physical and concussion forms turned in before then. You cannot participate without one. The Fine Arts Booster Club is offering a $100 gift card to the winning banner design representing Fine Arts at Seaman High. Entry deadline is December 21st. Seaman Art Club will be hosting live drawing nights one Thursday a month from 6 to 7.30. The next drawing session is November 8th. The drawing sessions are open to anyone who lives in our community. Basic drawing materials will be provided. Students, be aware that the Writing Center will be closed on Wednesday, November 7th. Key Club members, you need to turn in your UNICEF boxes to Mr. Cromie as soon as possible. If you're eligible, make sure you go out and vote tomorrow. Now, over to Josh to see when this rain is going to stop and when we might be seeing some snow. Vikes, I hope you enjoyed the extra hour of sleep we gained Sunday morning. And let's take a look at the new sunrise time, 6.55 in the morning. That's right, so a little bit later, but sunset quite a bit earlier, 5.17. And keep in mind, these numbers are still getting earlier. We are still losing daylight all the way up through December 22nd. And as we take a look now at the rainfall through this morning so far, 18 hundredths of an inch have fallen with the showers around. It was a wet drive into school, but overall the rain going to become more hit and miss throughout the remainder of the day today. However, where it's not going to be slowing down and actually picking up is down here in the southeast where we have an enhanced risk for severe weather in play. That's right, damaging winds and tornadoes, a few of which could be on the stronger side a little bit later on down there. Back at home though, we are talking about a snow chance heading into Thursday afternoon. Our second snow of the season could possibly come as we take a look here. Some rain will probably change over to snow sometime on Thursday. However, it's a tricky forecast with temperatures that are going to be hovering right around freezing or a few degrees above freezing. So it remains to be seen just how much snow will re re we'll reach the ground. And as we take a look past Thursday, some much colder air is on the way, so get ready. We'll take a look at just how cold we get, along with your full seven-day forecast coming up tomorrow. But for now, Sophie, back to you. Thanks, Josh. All right, that's all we have for today, Vikes. I'm going to leave you with a Laura Keller Kelly interview. Have a great rest of your day. All right, that's all we have for today, Vikes. I'll see you next week. Hey, Vikes. I'm sitting down with a very special guest, uh, Kansas Senator and Democratic candidate for the uh, governor position, Laura Kelly. Thank you so much for sitting down with us. The first question I really want to get into is something that I think is really important to a lot of Americans, and that's... What do you love about this state? Well, what's not to love? Uh, but if I had to pick out one thing, I think it would have to be the Flint Hills, um, that uh, there is no other place quite like the Flint Hills. Uh, there's no serenity uh, like that. And just um, the, the sheer understated beauty uh, of, those, of those hills. So I think that's the thing I like the best. But what I like the best about Kansas, obviously, is the people. You know, we came here 32 years ago. Uh, my husband and I chose to move to Kansas uh, because of the strong sense of community that you have here and the great public schools. 
Uh, I spent 18 years as executive director for the Kansas Recreation and Park Association, so I got the privilege of traveling all over the state to every small town, every large town, uh, really got to know the state, really got to know the people, and affirmed our decision uh, to move here. Well, that's great to hear. That kind of leads into my second question, which is, what do you want for Kansas's future? I want the Kansas that I moved to. You know, we moved here because of the great public schools and the, the good job opportunities. I want to bring that back. You know, we we've really suffered over the past eight years. Uh, there was uh, a tax experiment put in place by Governor Brownback uh, that really devastated our state. I mean, I think you felt this uh, in the Siemens School District. Uh, I know if if you haven't felt it, the administrators have as they tried to juggle uh, cuts uh, that were made to our schools. Uh, and made it very difficult for them uh, to provide the resources that students need to learn. Uh, so I want to I want to restore that. I, I want to bring our schools back to being the world class operations they always have been. Uh, and then we need to do some other things. We need to reinvest in our infrastructure. Uh, our roads have been. Uh, We've canceled projects, we've delayed projects, we've not been doing maintenance. Uh, so we're taking what used to be probably the best roads in the country, uh, and they no longer are, and we need to bring that back. It's incredibly important to our economy. Uh, I also want to make sure that we've got broadband coverage all across the state. You know, this is, this is a time in the business world where if you don't have access to the internet, uh, you're not going to have a business. And we'd have a very hard time attracting businesses uh, or getting people to stay uh, if we don't have access for that. So we need to do that. And then finally, I will expand Medicaid uh, so that we can provide health care access uh, to 150,000 more Kansans. Uh, but we'll also grow our economy and uh, increase the number of jobs in this state. All right, thank you. Um, one of the things you touched on is education. Uh, Kobach wants to cut taxes, but also wants to make education better. How do you plan on funding education, and how do you want to improve it? Well, I can just guarantee you uh, that there is no way you can cut taxes and fund education. We know that. We just went through that experiment. When, we, when taxes were cut under the Brownback tax experiment, there then followed the largest cuts uh, to our schools in our state's history. They have to come together. So to say that you can cut taxes and still fund our schools adequately and equitably uh, is false. It cannot be done. I've spent 14 years on the budget committee. I know the budget in and out, and I know it's impossible to do that. So we need to stay on the road to recovery. You know, we did overturn the tax experiment last year, put ourselves back on the road to recovery. We've been able to fund our schools. We'll come back next year uh, and finish off the inflation factor, and then we just need to continue to fund fund it at that level uh, straight through and keep ourselves out of court. All right. And obviously, there's a lot of 18-year-old seniors getting ready to go off to college. It seems like every year, college prices just keep on going up. Is there anything you plan on doing that will kind of keep those prices down for us? There is a direct correlation uh, between the amount of state support that our higher education institutions get and tuition. When we lower the support, which we have done significantly over the past eight years, tuition has been rising at skyrocketing rates. Uh, so yes, we can adequately fund our higher education system. That will be one thing that we can do. The other thing that we can do is we can continue to build on a career in tech ed uh, program, You know, giving kids the ability to come out of uh, high school either with a trade certificate uh, or with one year of college under their belt so that they can finish the, their four-year program in three, and that would be a savings on tuition. Okay. And K-12 through schooling and college is something that everyone can get behind. What are some other pieces of legislation that you want to present that both Republicans and Democrats can get behind? Well, I know Medicaid expansion is one of those. Uh, the legislature actually passed Medicaid expansion a couple of years ago. Governor Brownback vetoed it. We were not able to override that veto. Uh, but they can pass it again uh, this next session. We'll only need a simple majority, not a super majority. I will sign it into law and we'll move on. And one of the key issues that you and Mr. Kobach differ on is uh, undocumented immigrants. Um, he's kind of said what he wants to do. 
What would you like to do and how do you think that's better for Kansas? Uh, well, I think we can all agree that we want safe and secure borders and safe and secure communities and so we will do that. Uh, but the fact of the matter is for decades now we have needed a comprehensive immigration reform bill passed by Congress. So I'm going to work very hard with our congressional delegation to get them to break down the barriers, to work across the aisle and finally get that reform bill taken care of so that we can move on. You know, our industry here in the state of Kansas is highly dependent upon immigrant labor. Uh, if we were to just ship everybody back uh, to their country, uh, our, a lot of our towns would, would blow away. We don't want that to happen, uh, but we've got to find a way, uh, Congress has to find a way to fix it for us. Uh, they really do. Uh, obviously, where you're at now, you've worked really hard. What's some advice that you have for high schoolers on how they can become successful? Uh, continue their education, uh, whether in the trades. Uh, you know, I think there are a lot of very good, high-paying jobs available. Uh, so going to a career in tech ed school, getting that certificate and getting to work uh, is one way. The other way, obviously, is to continue education through our four-year system. Uh, and get themselves ready to enter the workforce prepared. And that kind of wraps up some of the serious questions. Uh, we thought it'd be fun to ask you guys, homecoming season kind of wrapped up, so we asked Mr. Kobach, and we thought it'd be fun to ask you some of the same questions we asked our homecoming candidates. Uh, so the first question <laughs> is, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Uh, it probably would be to end poverty. You know, I, I think when I look around at how problems are caused and how people struggle, if, if there's one, one criterion that happens in almost all those cases, poverty is the problem. All right, and that leads to our second question, which is, if you were stuck on an island and you could only have one food, what would it be? Oh dear, that would probably have to be uh, a tuna sandwich. Tuna sandwich, all right. I'm more of a steak guy, but <laughs> uh, now just some. I figured I didn't have a cap, so what was I? <laughs> yeah, uh, I could now fish. Just some <laughs> rapid fire questions: Jayhawks or Wildcats? Not saying. <laughs> uh, Chili's or Applebee's? Uh, neither. I really prefer Noto Burrito. Okay. All right. Uh, burgers or hot dogs? Oh, definitely burgers. <laughs> and then Kelly or Kobach? Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think Laura Kelly will do a great job for every Kansan. All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, the election is November 6th, so make sure if you're 18, get out there and vote. Thank you again for meeting with us. It's been this a pleasure. Was, this was delightful. Thank you. Yeah.